loving creator, compassionate sibling, accompanying spirit. We seek to be mindful of your ways, even in the midst of turbulent times, especially in the midst of turbulent times. Remind us of how this is all supposed to go. Remind us that love is always the answer, always. Love for ourselves, love for our friends and family, love for our enemies, and we acknowledge that those lines are blurry. Help us to be faithful to our personal truth, that which makes us uniquely suited to thrive in this world, so that we can be beautiful instruments of your peace, a peace that this world desperately needs. And so we ask that you take our minds and think through them, take our mouths and speak through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. These last two weeks, we have seen what Jesus is calling us to be, people filled with flavor. Last week, it was becoming the salt of the earth, the light for the world. This was the lectionary text. And this week, we receive the details. Flavorful people have integrity and honor, and people see that by their action, not by their word. I am moved deeply by people who know their flavor and aren't afraid to share that flavor with the world, as if they just know that they are a necessary and interesting ingredient that this great stew of the earth needs. And I think I'm particularly moved by people who see themselves this way because they know that they are not the only ingredient in the stew. To have that combination of confidence to know who one is and humility to know that you can't possibly do this without the help of others. Who do you know like that? Someone who both knows their flavor and their place in the greater stew. The last two years of my life, I've felt pretty bland for the most part. Like a, like a filling Midwestern casserole. Some of you are from the Midwest, you know what I'm talking about. Lots of butter, lots of macaroni, lots of American cheese, lots of white bread crumbs sprinkled over the top. And aside from some bits of pimentos, no flavor. And it had an impact on my heart, this lack of flavor in my life. I'm humbled to be here in the midst of some pretty major transitions in my life which are uncomfortable. And yet, maybe being uncomfortable or being unstable is a luxury, is not a luxury that most can ill afford in this world. So this expensive lesson I am learning could be a valuable way to identify with those for whom this comfortable way of life is the way of life. Without work, moving constantly, uprooting in a painful kind of love, but uncertain about what lies ahead. Personally, vocationally, globally, it all seems to be in upheaval from my perspective. And yet here I am declaring that I am running for the president of the United States. I'm just kidding, I'm not, I'm not really. That'd be funny though, wouldn't it? Yeah, about five minutes. Just kidding. I'm declaring that I am discovering my own flavor, discovering what it means to be a light for the world by creating that divine light from within and discovering that from within. For years, I've been trying to make my flavor profile be something that it wasn't. I'm not an entrepreneur. And my strategy leadership skills need a lot of work. And yet the Big C Church, in its acknowledgement of its membership decline, was crying out for people who were, who were charismatic, strategic entrepreneurs to step up to the plate and get the church out of the hole that we've dug ourselves in. I got the impression that the last thing we needed was chaplains 
taking up the place of entrepreneurial pastors who could actually grow the church. And I bought it. My whole life and personality profile had always pointed me toward pastoral, counseling, chaplainy kind of roles. But I resisted jumping full into those roles. And I thought to myself, why can't I just bring that kind of spirit into whatever role I'm playing? Be a developer, be an entrepreneur, but sprinkle your chaplainy goodness over the top of whatever you're doing, like Midwestern white breadcrumbs. Except that it was always half-hearted or ill-fitting. I'm now jumping full into it. I don't know how it's all going to play out, but I'm stepping forward into this new vocational path of hospital chaplaincy with dumb gusto. But this isn't only about self-expression and discovering what I love to do. As we've acknowledged in our prayer times, these are strange and hard times we are living in. When national leaders seem to turn a blind eye to ethics violations that could have severe consequences on the survivability of too many on this earth. When our neighbors to the south, human beings for crying out loud, fighting for that very survival are treated like cattle at the hands of those same leaders. When our earth is groaning under the years of abuse that we continue to heap upon it. And to top it all off with a new deadly virus spreading, causing serious illness and death with side consequences of isolationism and xenophobia. All of what is surrounding us, corrupt power, immigration nightmares, climate devastation, illness and death can have the capacity to make us shrink away, to self-medicate, to escape, to hunker down, to hide ourselves in order to protect ourselves, thereby hiding our gifts, our internal light, our flavor, but it is precisely our gifts, our light, and our flavor that are needed in this global situation right now. Many of you have undoubtedly heard of this Francis Buechner quote, vocation is the place where our deep gladness meets the world's deep need. Right here, this is your vocation. It is often a quote that is used to help people discerning a ministry calling, but we believe that everyone is called, the priesthood of all believers, not just those who go into debt to go to seminary. But let that sit with you for a second. Vocation is the place where your deepest gladness meets the world's deepest need. This is where we are called to reside with our very lives. Isn't this just about turning that light inside out and allowing others to participate in that light and for that light to have purpose? To have that flavor that is inside of you to be released into this giant stew and make this world bend toward justice, mercy, loving kindness, hospitality, friendship. Isn't that what this is all about? Perhaps you've been like me, though. Whereas desperate to meet the world's deepest need, or even meet the deepest need of the person sitting right across from me, what I thought was their deepest need. But what, at the expense of what really brings out my fullest flavor. It's not that the world doesn't need entrepreneurs or fundraisers, but the world doesn't need me to be an entrepreneur or a fundraiser. I have other gifts to offer. Gifts of presence, listening, thoughtfulness, easy relatability, and unflappability. The world needs present, thoughtful, unflappable me to be with people who are in their most vulnerable points of life, to help them experience love and kindness, to help them experience the divine alongside them in their journey. That's what makes me come alive. And I can see now that is not a backseat vocation, but that that has value and purpose. You've probably also heard this quote from Howard Thurman. 
Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Amen. Beautiful words, but I used to cringe at those words because I knew how true they were and how far I was from living that truth. One of the many reasons that I'm drawn to the church is that it's filled with a healthy, transitory flow of people who have the courage to discover their flavor and unabashedly let their lights shine brightly. People in the church have inspired me to experiment, to see that failure is not trying, to release my own shame and to recognize, in spite of these fearful times, the abundance that is constantly surrounding us. What a beautiful collection of flavorful souls I see before me right now. So I wonder, what is your flavor? Are you salty? Anybody salty here? I'm pretty salty. Pretty salty, yeah. Any sweet ones out there? Yeah, <laughs> sweet and salty, like salted caramel. Sweet and sour, you got a sour, maybe a little bit of sour puss in you, yeah, yeah. Anybody just like randomly an orange flavored? No? No? I'm pretty savory. Pretty savory? Got it. Yes. Thanks. What flavor do you feel called to become? I want you to, we're going to do a little uh, talking with each other here. Uh, just for seven minutes, five minutes, excuse me, five minutes total. Where you're going to pair up. And, uh, and, and share with one another. First of all, what, what's your flavor? Okay. And second of all, talk about that quote. The vocation is the place where your deep desire, deep gladness meets the world's deepest need. And what does that mean for you? What is your deep gladness? And where does that intersect with the world's deep need? Okay. So we'll spend about five minutes, that's all, maybe less, talking with each other. I'll make sure that both people have an opportunity to talk. I'll give us a halfway kind of warning time um, and uh, we'll, we'll come back together, okay? And I'm going to bring us back together with a song. I'm going to start singing a song to get us back together. So that, that's how you know we're done, okay? Okay, five minutes. <laughs>